welcome everybody to another edition of Disruptive Dental Sciences. I am your host today, Dr. Ashton Prince. I am one of the uh, dental clinical ambassadors for Dental Advisor. And with me today, I am honored to have one of my good friends, uh, Dr. Todd Snyder with us. Todd, good morning. How are you today? Thank you. Glad to be here. Beautiful. Well, tell tell the world who who are you and who is who is the the one and only Todd Snyder. You know, I am one of many hats, and uh, you know, I'm a general dentist like probably many of your listeners, and uh, I hail from California, but I've also got an office in Vegas. Do a lot of public speaking, a lot of teaching, a lot of research articles and things published over the years. Done a fair amount of things in dentistry, but a lot of stuff also in business. So, thanks for having me on the show, Ashton. Well, uh, Todd and I got to see each other, it was been a number of years ago that he and I met, and, and prior to this podcast, then we decided that we wanted to kind of touch base just a little bit. So we started just chit-chatting about a few things, and, and we're going to get into a few, a few topics, a few items here as we discuss things today, but one of the, the key items that we kind of started off with is uh, he was asking how I was doing, I was asking how he was doing. We both came upon the same thing, that we're both building an office right now. His about 15, 16 months in. Mine's three years into production, which is one of the dumbest things ever. But uh, as, as I kind of was going through things, I'll, I'll set this up for you, Todd, so you can kind of explain your position and how you made <laughs> me feel stupid here in a second. But I was going from an office that was about four to five uh, operatories uh, and a single doctor. I was just in my own, own little spot. And the spot that I'm building here, hopefully in by the end of this year, then uh, it's going to a nine operatory office with a lot more staffing, a lot more hiring. Uh, you know, it, it, there's a lot more headache and, and, and issues that way. At least I didn't think so because that seemed like it was just the way that, that you set up a uh, growing practice. Now, Todd, you, you told me otherwise. Tell, uh, kind of explain what you told me as to why it is that, that you thought I might be a, a little bit on the mentally insane style of things. No, I never said that. I don't even <laughs> say it, but I, that's the way I felt afterwards. So, so give me the works. I mean, t tell me, because I mean, we're, we're dealing with a lot of, I mean, the hiring and things that dentists are not trained to deal with. I mean, it, it's kind of a terrible dynamic to it. But, but tell me what your vision is of of what an office can be. Well, you know, we're obviously joking and having fun here, but but there is something that probably creeped into the back of your mind, right? You did ask yourself, like, hmm, he might have a point, right? I mean, it's not oh, that a thousand it, percent. I did. And, and so the only thing that I like to point out when I'm teaching and having discussions is to ask ourselves why we do what we do. And so the thought process is, oh, yeah, I'm going to build a huge, big office. I'm going to have tons of employees. I'm going to have tons of patients. I'm going to make money, and everyone's going to come to my place. And you know, we have that vision. And, and I'm no different. And when I built my office from scratch 24 years ago, I built five operatories thinking like, oh, yeah, like that's, that's going to be huge. Well, you know, everyone define how big things are for them, but five, nine, whatever it is or anything in between. And what I found after, you know, 25 years of doing my own dentistry, you know, granted having done this now for 30 plus years, but having my own office, I said, you know, after five years, what I found is for me, my uniqueness, that I produce the majority of the revenue in the office, right? And then, you know, I've got a hygienist, I got an assistant, I got a front office. But what I found is your number one liability, your number one headache, number one frustration, right? Number one overhead is your employees. 100%. Absolutely and so, agree. Right? So if, if you ask yourself, okay, how hard is it? Or no, let me rephrase that. How easy is it to find a good employee these days? <laughs> well, not only to find one, but to maintain one as well. Right? Now, to maintain them, you've got to train them. How much time and effort you put into training? Ask yourself. If you ask me personally, I can't. I don't have the time for right. it. Right. But that's this. I'm asking everyone in the audience because everyone's listening as well. So sure. th these aren't just pointed at you, but... You know, and so you ask yourself, because <laughs> I'm, I'm like the it. same as everybody out there. It's like, okay, yeah, I didn't put a whole lot of training and time and effort into my employees. So you wonder why you have arguments, frustrations, headaches, people quitting. You know, like all the drama and problems you have is on you as the business owner. Sure. You chose the style. You chose the size. You chose the employees. You chose not to train them, and therefore you have to deal with your headaches. So this is what I was saying. I started to feel a little bit diminished in what I was doing. Because I was. As soon as I finished talking with you, Todd, I thought, okay, I've got nine ops. That means I'm going to have people checking people in, people checking people out, two chairs for, my, for myself, two for my associate, four hygiene chairs that we were going to try and run. And the more and more I thought about it, the more headache I was kind of getting thinking, this is, this is more than I thought that I was actually signing up for now that I actually sit down and think about it. 
Yeah. We often do. We often you know, have a regret after the fact because w- are we doing something because we want it? Are we doing something because someone told it it was this way? It's what we've always heard we should do. You know, why do we do anything in life w- outside of business? You know, anything you do in life, why do you do what you do? Sure. A- and so I came to that realization and said, okay, I'm going to build a new office, and uh, I'm going to make it one operatory. And I'm going to have no front office. I'm going to have no hygienist. And I'm going to have no assistant. And you're like, wait, what? I, I did. How? I sat there thinking, <laughs> I have set myself up for something extremely expensive, and I could have done this. And it's, it's brilliant. Continue, Todd. I, I love well, these thoughts. And again, it's just to make everyone question what they do and why. I'm not telling everyone to go out and build a single chair op- operatory, you know, kind of thing. Um, but, but the concept is, okay, so you, you think to yourself, how do you greet people or who's at the front desk? It's like, well, depending on your flow, if you're seeing tons of people, yeah, you probably want someone up there. But most offices that have a number of operatories and have lots of patients coming and going, what I find in consulting is they have too many people up front that aren't trained well enough to perform tasks you know, well, such that they need extra people to overlap, right? A- and again, generalization, obviously not every office, but you go, okay, I'd say most are overstaffed. And so, okay, well, could we repurpose that person to do something else in the business that's creating more revenue and productivity and replace them with something else? So again, no matter how big your front office is, or if you're a smaller office, maybe you don't need that front office because really they're just saying, hey, welcome to the office, have a seat, can I get you a water, do you need a bathroom key? You know, other than that, it's, you know, can I reschedule you an appointment? Can you fill out these forms? Can I take your money? All of that can be automated nowadays. There is technology, whether it be AI or, uh, you know, various types of software systems. There are things implemented that you don't even have to interact with that patient technically. We're, and talking, so you can, we're talking AI at this point, yes. Yeah. So uh, what, what, what's your vision? What's your setup? I mean, what, why, why transition things from that? S- usually in the past, there's this, this thought of, well, you've got to have the friendly face to welcome you at the front. Is that still in your mind, the necessity that we have in our offices? I don't think it's a necessity because, again, going into AI and software, you could have some type of hologram, holographic image, computer screen, you call it whatever you want, but someone that's a greeter that's there digitally says, hey, welcome to the office. We've been waiting for you. I love and it. Depending, on the, depending on the software, they could greet the person by name. Now, granted, hopefully the UPS or the Sparkless guy doesn't show up and <laughs> call him <laughs> Tammy. But, <laughs> you know, but that that's, com- that, it's coming. I mean, some of it's here, but, you know, that, that type of technology is present, albeit not perfect in some ways, like I just mentioned, but yeah, you don't necessarily need someone there. And Think about it. Most of you probably have ring doorbells, right? Well, someone comes into the front door, and you know they're there. Someone enters through a business, and a, a, a chime goes off to alert employees that someone walked through the door. Well, you could have the same thing in your office. When you hear that chime, someone gets up and goes to the front door. All you yeah. have to do is go and greet the person, offer them water, have them sit down. If they didn't fill out forms yet, you hand them an iPad that has the forms that automatically go into your practice management software. But ideally, they should have done it 48 hours before they ever showed up for their appointment so that you're not put behind schedule. Right? And so you look at all this automation and technology, you go, okay, I could see where potentially I don't need someone at the front office based on how big of an office you have. Or you could say, well, I've got a lot of employees, and you know, we hustle, we, we, you know, we take all the insurance, and we do all these things. It's like, okay, nothing wrong with that. But you could downsize your team or repurpose the team to be more productive and financially profitable. Sure. Now, we're, we're talking about mostly just checking in and welcoming and things like that, but AI these days can do so much more than that in, in your views, correct? Yeah, yeah. You know, we can we can back up and say, okay, well, someone calls the office. You say, well, I got to have someone answering the phones. Do you? Because again, <laughs> think about how much training you've done with your your front office staff on how to answer the phones. Now, you've probably got someone that's already been in the dental industry, and so you figure they assume they already know what to do, right? They say, hey, what insurance do you have? What's your name? And give me your phone number. Right? But is that really how you want them to answer the phone? Interact with people? You know, you decide. But unless someone has training on communication, psychology, and how to talk to someone, there's a lot of bad phone conversations. You know? and, and if you record your front office and you listen to it and you, you understand enough about the communication that should be happening, you might realize that most of your employees are not performing as well as they should be. And that's a proven fact. You know, there's, there's research on that that says like 99% of offices are not trained properly or adequately to talk on the phone. And, and hence, there's software to, to train people and track people and listen to conversations. But I digress. 
So you go, okay, think of AI. AI software. You answer, you, you call an office, a bot, software, AI person, whatever you want to call them, greets you on the phone. And it doesn't sound like computer robot -y, like, you know, things of just a few years ago. It Not sounds like it pretty used darn to. good. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And, and you get to choose. Do you want an Australian a accent? You know, like English accent? You know, like <laughs> you get to choose what type of accent you want. Is it a male or female? Is her name Tammy or Steve or you know, whatever? And you go, wow, this is really cool. And um, so, again, when someone, you know, calls the office, usually the patient is in charge of the communication, right? They're saying, hi, this is Steve. I'm calling as a new patient. I want to make an appointment. Do you take my insurance? And the front office says, well, what insurance do you have? And they say, oh, I've got such and such HMO or PPO. And the office says, yes, we take that. And he says, okay, thanks, and may get off the phone. Or maybe ask, well, I'm looking for a zirconia crown. What do you charge? And the front office gives them the answer. It's, oh, $800 is our insurance fee or whatever. You know, like, and the patient goes, okay, thanks, and they're off the phone. And so they missed out on the person's potentially name, email, phone number for follow-up capabilities, sure. right? Because you want to be able to follow up on everyone that calls your office. And from there, also asking difficult questions, you know, taking charge of the conversation as opposed to being reactive, being proactive and saying, okay, so your name was, I'm sorry, Steve, and you're calling the office to become a new patient? Okay, from there, there's important questions you need to ask, but now you're in charge because you're asking the questions. And you're saying, so now you want to, like, understand their mindset. Well, why are you looking for a new office, Steve? You know, like, and they're going to give you information. And then you're going to use that information to compel them to want to be in your office, but also to compel them to understand why they maybe left their prior office, unless they just moved to the area. But a lot of people are like, well, I'm leaving the other office. It's like, well, why is that? Well, it's always a different dentist, or they're always trying to upsell me something, or, you know, every year they're doing more dentistry on me, you know, or, or my insurance wasn't paying well enough. And so it's like, okay, so you're leaving because of all these things, and now you're coming here. And so you're assuming it's going to be different. Why? You know, like, so, again, tough questions that most front office aren't going to think and ask. But you can use their problems, their concerns against them. And you can train AI to ask these tough questions. Or if you're, you know, busy trying to check someone out or answer another call, like, you're not saying, hold, please. AI is doing all this for you. And they're asking difficult questions to get the results, to get the patient to move forward and say yes to you and your office. And they're doing it with consistency as well. It's the same. I mean, if we go throughout right. an entire day, well, my energy level at the beginning of the day is not the same as what it is at the end of the day. So depending on when the person actually calls, whoever's running my front and answering that phone may not even be introducing themselves in the same manner, may not even have the yeah. same energy they need to have. And this, this pretty well bypasses that entire issue. While I'm able to stay as, as a clinician, back doing what I do and allow for the interactions with these patients or these phone calls to be what they need to be every single time. Right. And think about accountability. Mm. You know, so who's holding the front office accountable? If you haven't trained them and you're not listening to them and you're not having more conversations with them after listening to the phone calls, how do you even know that they're doing what you're supposed to be doing? Very good point. Uh, to be very genuine with you, from our standpoint, for the most part, we don't. Unless we are recording, unless we are training, unless we are doing something to be watching on the back end. But how much do we want to micromanage in the first place? For me personally, I'd rather put my, my time somewhere else. Yeah. You know, it, it, but, you know, I think most offices feel that way. I know I was guilty of that until I found ways to actually listen and have conversations. And, and not that it was micromanagement or a bad thing, but now they know I'm listening. Mm. And so they're now playing at a different level. Not that they're going to be perfect, but and not that I'm going to, you know, like, you know, chastise them for not doing things properly, but to, you know, like, to basically say, hey, here's where we could potentially, you know, improve upon conversation or having listened to it. What are things that you think maybe you should have asked or done? And, and so again, it just becomes like, how can we improve by asking ourselves questions, not as a bad thing, but as a possibility of improving on whatever we're doing? Always asking why we do what we do. Uh, I've, I've always known Dr. Snyder to be a kind of against the status quo of what goes on <laughs> out there. I, I, I've heard that a number of times. Yeah. But there's, there's one thing that kind of keyed my interest a little bit. It's, uh, we'll, we'll get into this a little bit later on, but there's so many factors that we have to kind of keep our eyes on, and one of which is collections that if you haven't trained your front office team members or your collecting uh, managers to, to go through this, that's a conversation that nobody loves to have. But from an AI standpoint, it's consistent. It's the hard questions, and it doesn't become an issue afterwards. So right. it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. 
So, Todd, tell me this. Uh, when, when you picture your, your office that you're building up, you said potentially going into just a single chair. I, how, how do you see the flow of the office actually running? Are, are you thinking a, a hologram of, of somebody up front and they're doing all the introductions? I mean, who do you think is actually going to be on your team when this is said and done? Right. So, yes, uh, you know, some type of hologram or holographic thing up front. I love the idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just as a greeter, and just a fun factor. You know, there's some really cool ones out there. But also, you know, when someone's there, you know, you can have someone from the back. Like I said, you can have a camera in your operatory. The doorbell rings that someone walked in. And you, you know, so we stop for a second. And, you know, you have the ability nowadays to communicate through a computer screen. So I could literally turn to my monitor in my operatory and say, hi, you know, Betsy, good to see you. Have a seat. We'll be out with you in just a second. And she can see me real time, just like you and I are doing on a Zoom call right now. Mm -hmm. And you go, well, that's kind of cool. Or I may, maybe I just stop and I say, okay, my assistant, you know, whomever that is, she's going to go up front real quick and, you know, make sure they're taken care of. She'll be right back in a minute and we can finish our procedure. Um, but at the same token, if I'm not running room to room and everything else, I should be on time for the most part. I mean, I typically run on time. You know, granted, emergencies and problems happen, but I'd say it's very rare. So you go, okay, so potentially I go out and greet them myself and talk about customer service. The doctor's coming out and saying hello now, right? So Very there different. are numerous, numerous ways in which you could make that work, right? That it, it's more like family. I'm coming out to see you myself. It's not like, hey, have a seat. You know, the window slides open. Fill out the clipboard. <laughs> we'll get back to you, you know? <laughs> it's no, it's personalized attention. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, so... So, Todd, let's, let's be honest about things. I mean, we're, we're kind of talking Star Trek mentalities out of this. I mean, this is things yeah. of the future. I mean, what we kind of said was what we're dealing with right now in AI is oh, we're not talking iPhone 1. We're probably about iPhone 4, 5, 6, somewhere in there. I mean, we could get up to iPhone 15 at this point if we're really developing things out, but we're not quite there yet. So we, I, I want to kind of re, re-approach this with you. I, I, I really and truly, I, I thank you for your time with with what we've been talking about so far, but I, I think that we need to chat a little bit more about this. So I, I kind of want to leave just a little bit of, of, a, of a cliffhanger for us here because I'm going to bring Todd back and have a discussion about, since Star Trek isn't here yet, how can we maximize what we have now? And what things do we need to look at? What things do we need to track? What things do we need to actually see to make sure that we are actually being successful and making the best use of our time? So... Todd, thank you very, very much for your time today. It's an absolute honor. And once again, thank you for making me feel about that big in the prepping of my office. I really appreciate that. But the truth of the matter is, why do we do what we do is, it's a big note that I put with a big asterisk next to it of, I got to find that out for myself and to really understand why it is that I do what I do. So thank you, Todd. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks for having me on the show, Ashton. Absolutely. We'll see you next time through. Thank you very much for spending a couple of minutes with us.